Hey traders, welcome to another introductory video in this very long series. Um, as I said on, on my introduction to the, to the channel, the plan is to help novice traders start trading like a pro. This video is a general introduction about the global financial market. Before we start, let me just get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. Um, in brief, I'm not a financial advisor and these videos represent my own understanding of the topics presented and my own opinion. These are not recommendations of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's get started. So what do we have on the menu today? Today, the plan is to define what do we mean by the market. A quick history about Wall Street. I thought this might be uh, interested or boring. I don't know. You tell me. Market participants. These are your competitors, by the way. What are the investment options we have? The investment investments universe. And finally, closing notes. Uh, I will have many in-depth dedicated videos covering all of these topics and many more. So please subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what do we mean when we say the market? The market is simply us, me, you, your family members and friends who invest or trade, someone who is living 5,000 miles away on the other side of the globe is part of the market. The market also includes the big whales, the market maker. And this is called market participants, as we will see later in the video. So, Long story short, the crowd is the market. Remember this one fact because the crowd is most of the time wrong. That's why statistically speaking, 90% of the traders get wiped out and replaced by new herd. And, and now the question is, can we possibly beat the market? And the answer is simple, no we can't. We don't have a fraction of the resources the big whales and the market makers have. So, now you might ask if this was a dead end, why do we e even trade? Well, hang on, I didn't finish it. We could have some edge in few aspects. We are decision makers. You wake up in the morning, you decide what to trade, when to trade, and by how much. Usually big funds are bound by different rules that most of the time uh, it put a leash on their decisions. Like for instance, the type of securities this fund is allowed to trade, uh, the kind of diversification, when, uh, by how much. We have the liberty of decide on these aspects ourselves. So this is a big plus uh, on our side. And number two, our dedication. If all the market participants agree on a direction, remember this, there is a market because there are different opinions. When you decide to buy stock Apple, for instance, someone has to sell it. You are buying it because you believe 
Apple is going up and someone is selling it because he or she believes Apple is going down. So this contradiction in opinion creates the market. For instance, let's assume that everyone believes that Apple is going up. So there will be no sellers. There will be no market. Okay. Okay. Some boring stuff now. This is a quick history about Wall Street. Uh, I thought it would be relevant to include, um, just so you know, I, I, I replicated this information from Wikipedia. The link is on the page in case you're interested to check it out. In brief, 250 years ago, there was actually a real war where traders will meet to sell and buy stuff, commodities. Sadly speaking, slavery was a commodity by, by then. The New York Stock Exchange was created on May 17th, 1792. The legend says that a group of 24 stood beneath a buttonwood tree on New York City, Wall Street. Uh, I'm not sure if this is true or not. And that group came up with the Bottonwood Agreement. Individual auctioneers were used to trade commodities. Uh, it's it's still the same. Still the same thing now. If you think about it, the the the, the auction style, the bid and ask is a kind of an auction. I'm, I'm offering uh, a price and you say, no, this price is, is too high. You're bidding a lower price. So it's, it's some kind of an auction. 25 years later, that org organization became the New York Stock Exchange and Exchange Board, which was shortened to New York Stock Exchange in 1863. It's the first company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. By then, there were five securities traded in New York after the inception of the Bottonwood Agreement. Among those was the Bank of New York, which is recognized as the first publicly traded company connected to the New York, New York Stock Exchange. Next, now we could ask who is trading in the market with us? Remember, we are retail investors. I'm assuming that whomever is watching me is a retail investor. We are buying and selling from other people around the globe. Among those are the big whales and they represent part of the market. So let's go, go over the market participants and see who they are. The first one is investment banks. An investment bank is a company that offers financial service. It acts as an intermediary in the large financial transactions. Investment banks get involved when a startup company prepares for its IPO. So when you hear that a company is issuing shares, filing for an IPO, you know that an investment bank should be involved. Also, some act as brokers or financial advisors for large institutional clients, such as pension funds, for example. Some global investment banks, I'm sure that you know most of these names, Credit Suisse, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and so on. Next, we have hedge funds. This represent private investment vehicles. They manage portfolios of securities and derivative positions employing various strategies. Mutual funds, these funds pull money from several investors and invest these funds in a portfolio of securities. 
individuals and institutions may invest in these funds. The, the, one of the benefits of these funds or investing in funds is diversification. Diversification is, let's say that you are investing $10,000, but you don't want to put all the $10,000 in one industry or in one sector. So you diversify. You will put 20% in technology, 20% in, um, in uh, manufacturing, 20% in construction, okay? Next, brokers. Brokers are agents who carry out transactions for their clients. We as retail investors, we trade in the market through brokers. They must seek the best price for us. And in return, they charge commission for providing services to their clients. Next, private equity. Private equity funds invest in equity investments that are not publicly traded on exchanges or in public companies. And one of the objectives is to take them private. They may divide this private company into smaller companies but the exit strategy, it's called the exit strategy, is ideally is to take them private or maybe sell it, sell part of it or parts of it to other private investors. Next, the market makers. This is mainly the quotes that you see uh, on any trading security, the bid and the ask. These are usually created by market makers. They are ready to buy at one low price and sell at another high price. Retail investors are speculators who are willing to take risks to earn profit. This is us, me and you and people like us. Sovereign wealth funds. Um, this is a bit of, of, of it needs some economic uh, explanation. It's countries with large capital account surplus. They invest in capital, the capital flows in sovereign funds. They have extra money, so they invest it. They create funds called sovereign funds, sovereign wealth funds, and they invest. This is mainly for investment purposes, rather than hold the securities for long periods of time, like the, the foreign uh, currencies reserves. These funds are for investment, to make profit. And those funds that are managed by central banks, they are usually very conservative kind of investments. They will not take high risk. They will not in get involved in risky investments. Also, sometimes governments and central banks intervene in the market to create from their opinion some sort of balance, mainly in the foreign exchange market. They have some policy goals and they interfere to maintain the level that they are seeking. Like back, uh, like Bank of uh, the Central Bank of Japan, back in the nineties, uh, mid nineties, I believe, when the Japanese yen became very expensive, it went to as low as uh, maybe seventy-five or eighty or seventy one dollar equal uh, seventy-five yen. And then the, the, the Bank of Japan had to intervene to uh, make its currency cheaper. And he managed to lift it up to one. Um, this was maybe between 99 and 2001, 2002. But he couldn't sustain this level and it went back down to 80 again or even 70. I don't remember the exact figures, but if you check the... The, the chart of uh, Japanese yen USD, you'd, you'd clearly see uh, the central bank intervention. Next, 
what are the classifications of trading instruments that are available? These are mainly divided into eight different categories. As, as we will go over one, we'll see that even some of them, you'll find um, some securities that are, are common uh, between more than one uh, classification. We have securities, fixed income, equities, contracts, currencies, commodities, real assets, and pooled investment. Let's go over each and every one of them. First, securities. This include bonds, notes, commer commercial paper, mortgages, common stocks, preferred stocks, warrants, mutual funds, ETFs, exchange traded funds, and so on. They may be classified as public securities that trade in public market exchanges or private securities. And those are can only be purcha pur purchased by qualified investors. Remember that uh, private securities are relatively illiquid. Illiquid means it's not easy to sell. If you have a stock on Tesla, you could sell it in five seconds. But you have, if you have 10% of a private equity, it's not easy to sell. Fixed income securities are promises to repay borrowed money. A company would borrow money to expand and to get this money it has to promise the lender that it is going to pay the principal and interest with a predefined schedule. Fixed income instruments could be classified as bills, notes and bonds. Bills, these are issued by governments and have maturities of one year or less. This is bill. Notes are with maturities of 10 years or less. And finally, bonds with maturities greater than 10 years. So when you hear on Bloomberg, for instance, that they are talking about bonds, you know that the maturity is more than 10 years. And then we have certificate of deposits, commercial paper, money market instrument. These are traded in the money market and have maturities of less than one year. Next, equities. And this is what most of us trade, of course, plus uh, contract, as we will see in a bit. By equities, th we mean shares, stocks. We have common shares, preferred shares, and warrant. The difference between common shares and preferred shares is the priority on claims on dividends and in case a company goes bankruptcy. So on the liquidation, the preferred shares have a priority in, in, uh, in, in, in a payment. Warrants, the holders of warrants, they have the right to purchase an entity's common stock. So it's like an agreement with an option at a specified price before the expiration date of the warrant. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll dig deeper into, into these when we discuss stocks in more details, uh, but this is just an introduction, just so you know the terms. Contracts, we have many types of contracts. We have forward contracts, futures contract, what the difference between futures and forwards? Futures are very similar to forward in that they may also be deliverable or deliverable or cash settled. But the, the main difference futures contracts are standardized and are traded on exchanges. 
standardized means that if you are looking to trade futures on crude oil you will find on the exchange a list of the available contracts you ju just have to pick one of them in a forward you could create a tailored contract with with another seller or if you are a seller you could create a tailored contract with another buyer in a futures contract a clearing house is the counterparty to all futures contracts that why that's why futures contract contracts are default free in a forward contract a contract could be defaulted because one of the parties could not fulfill the agreement another type of contract is a swap and it's an agreement between two parties to exchange a series of cash flows at periodic settlement dates over a certain period of time. Next, options. There is, uh, I have a video on the channel uh, about options. It's an introduction. It's a very long one. And it covers all the basics of the options. Of options, uh, I, I strongly recommend that uh, you watch this if you are interested in options. But in brief, uh, options contracts give their holders the right to buy or sell a security at a predetermined price sometime in the future. There are two types of options, call options and put options. The buyer of a call option has the right, but not the obligation, to buy the underlying, the security that's traded with, with this options contract, at some future date at a predefined price. On the other hand, a put option holder has the right to sell the underlying at some future date at a predefined price. There are two styles of option contracts, American style and European style. An American style option could be exercised anytime. European style option could be exercised on expiry date. Again, if, if this is not clear, please watch my video on options introduction it's a it's a i think it could be very useful if you're interested in trading options next we have commodities commodities include precious metals energy products industrial metals agriculture products and carbon credit commodities could be traded in the spot market for immediate delivery or in the futures market. The primary traders in commodities spot market are producers. If you are trading uh, crude oil futures, you don't expect to receive uh, a truck with, um, I don't know, 1,000 uh, barrels of, uh, of, uh, of oil. At, 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 uh, at, uh, the, at your doorstep but you are trading for capital gain in the spot market the main participants are producers um, and refiners next we have real assets this include tangible properties such as a real estate for instance and these assets are normally held by operating companies like real estate developments or sometimes the REITs um, they own properties next we have pooled investments Pooled investments are investments in securities issued by entities that represent ownership in the underlying assets. 
and these include mutual funds and exchange traded funds you would buy an exchange traded fund an ETF for example SPY which represent the S&P 500 stocks so you get exposure to the whole S&P index by buying an ETF for a price of 10% of the uh, original index. Hedge funds and private equity funds, they require minimum investment of $1 million or more. Finally, to trade for a living, this is an extremely difficult and risky job because you are competing against the most brilliant, smartest, most sophisticated, well-funded and informed minds in the world. And remember this rule of thumb. Trading is a negative sum game. It's not a zero sum game as as everyone believes it's not a zero-sum game when you initiate a position you are already into negative ter territory due to the spread between the bid and the ask and the commissions and maybe slippage this is going to be discussed in more details in another video but just so you know when you st it's it's a negative sum game it's not a zero-sum game so the odds are against you so for you to beat the odds, you need to have an edge. For retail traders like you and me, we need to do our own analysis. We need to be dedicated because this is a job. If you, if you have millions of dollars and you don't mind losing a hundred thousand, okay, you're having it for fun, but you're having it for fun. <clears throat> but for most of us, this is source of income. This is our day job. So you need to work hard to get an edge over the over your competitors, the big whales. You need to learn how to do your own analysis. If you if you don't dedicate hours of research and you're not capable of doing your own analysis and you're following the so-called exper uh, experts, down the road you're going to lose your money. I guarantee you 99% this is going to happen. Learn how to do your own due diligence. I know it's not easy. That's why I created this channel. To teach you step by step, as you see, um, this is maybe the third or fourth video on the channel. We are still in the introduc introductory phase and we are going to be moving up step by step. Like for instance, I started with the options introduction. It's a long video, one hour and 20 minutes, I believe. And then the next video that would be post posted on the on, on the channel within coming days is I'm taking it a step further and discussing uh, option strategies. So I introduce a subject and then move a step further. Let's apply what we learned and let's take a step further in becoming a better trader. If you want to make millions trading, like all of us, this is our dream. You should learn that you should start by making a hundred dollars and then a thousand dollars. Easy money does not exist. The perfect strategy and the God's gift software that came from heaven that will generate millions of profit while you are laying down on the beach, it does not exist, period. This software does not exist. This perfect strategy does not exist. Take my word for it, it does not exist. 
finally the only person that will make you rich is you and the one person that will get you broke is also you remember this nobody is going to give you free money free money does not exist this was a quick introduction about the global financial market that you are part of now you know all the most of the basics uh, what are the available securities you may trade as per your trading objectives and plans and more importantly whom are you competing with uh, please subscribe to my channel to be informed when I post a new video in this very long series of courses in almost all aspects of the financial world. Let's trade like a pro. Thank you everyone and have a great day.